And the way um, the design of user interfaces happens is through an iterative design cycle. If you remember one thing about this hour, it's this cycle. This is how user interfaces get built in practice and in research. And that is, we start with a design phase. This is where you come up with ideas. Um, so you ask the question, what should we create? Right? And you may observe people to get some intuition. You come up with a rough design, and then you embody that design in a prototype. So a prototype is something concrete that you can test with your roommates, with target users. Um, that prototype then gets evaluated, and we have different possible ways to evaluate prototypes. And then we use what we learned from the evaluation to reflect on the original design. A, did we succeed in our goals? Um, if not, how should we change the design? And do we need a, a wholesale redesign of the fundamentals, or did we get the big things right, but the small things are still wrong? So evaluation tells us that. So we go into a next uh, phase of design, build a next prototype that may be more complete, more polished than the earlier one, evaluate that again, and we go through that cycle until we run out of time or budget. And the reason that cycle is necessary is that in anything that ha any product that touches human users, it's really hard to get it right the first time. And the reason for that is, is we don't have a complete model of how we as people operate. Right? We know some um, information from cognitive science. So we know how many, how many different things we can keep in memory before we have to start writing things down and we forget them. We know what kind of color contrasts work better than others. But this is only piecewise knowledge. To really evaluate whether the design as a whole works, we can't just look at it and reason, in, reason about it in the abstract. We have to embody it in a concrete piece of software, put it in front of people, and test it with them. All right, so let me just uh, walk you through each of these three phases in a little bit more detail. One really important phase is understanding users. So what you do is you go out in the world, you define as who are the people I want to help with my product, and you observe them, and you interview them, you ask them questions. For example, a couple of years ago, I uh, led a, um, a course at Stanford, and the task was to find new technology opportunities that improve the life of people at the farmer's market in San Francisco. Now, I am not like a vendor at the farmer's market, Right? I don't know what their job is like. So if I want to design a useful technology for them, I certainly need to find out more about their reality and their needs. So we took a field trip to the ferry building. Now, those observations then um, lead into the building of scenarios and models, where out of all the rich observations, you try to abstract what's, what are the core principles, the core needs, what's constant across a range of different observations. And those are the principles and the goals for your design. The next step is prototyping. And one of the chief goals in prototyping is just speed. Get something concrete that you can test as fast as possible. So there are a bunch of low fidelity techniques, such as paper prototyping, where you just draw what your user interface would look like on a piece of paper and have someone simulate using that paper interface. Or you can make video prototypes that look like the real product, but you ever actually never uh, wrote a single line of code. It was all done in Photoshop and Illustrator. And there are higher fidelity techniques as well, such as making interactive JavaScript, HTML, or Flash prototypes. The reason we make these prototypes is that the final implementation of something that is robust takes a long time to build and debug. You want to make sure you have the, your design right and all the design decisions already locked down before you take that big leap into implementation in a systems language. So we take lots of small, cheap, fast steps through prototyping um, to get perspectives into whether our design is going to work. So some prototyping techniques are, for example, storyboarding, where just like an animator at Pixar, you draw up key scenes of what using your user interface would look like. And then you walk someone through that storyboard. Or you could build 
a prototype that actually works. This is from the design company IDEO, who created this um, mock-up of what a digital camera back should look like back when most cameras still used film. Now, this doesn't actually have a lens on the other side. And you can't take it outside, because there's that thick cord that, um, that kind of connects it to a power PC, uh, an old Macintosh. But the point is, we can create something like that faster than to ramp up a production line and actually create this camera. This may take someone maybe a week uh, to put this prototype together. But then you can test, what should the screen show? What should the user interface elements be? All right, moving on to evaluation. There are two big categories of evaluation, formative and summative evaluation. Formative evaluation asks the question, are we building the right thing? And what should be different in the next iteration? So you do that early on. Summative evaluation asks, our project is complete. Does it work? Did, did it achieve its goal? And we have a whole range of different evaluation techniques. Here's a picture of kind of a stereotypical one that is really high fidelity. You have a usability lab where you bring in participants to use your software and you sit behind a halfway mirror and observe that participant and all the actions they take are logged through software loggers and video cameras and screen capture. So you get a really detailed account of what happened while people succeeded or struggled with your new software. Is it worth the effort? So one first question is, how much of an application source code is, developed, is devoted to user interface code on average? Well, this is an empirical question, right? You can just look at existing software projects and count the lines of code that are devoted to the UI versus the back end versus other algorithms. And this is precisely what researchers have done before. So uh, Myers and Rawson did a large-scale study, and they found that in today's applications, back in the 90s, an average of 48% of the code is devoted to the user interface portion. So you guys were spot on. Now, if it's really half of the entire code developed to the, devoted to the user interface, then probably we should also devote half of our effort in design and testing time to the user interface as well. 